Okay, perfect. So before moving on to the demo, I'm just going to present a couple other tools that we'll be um, that we'll be working with today, um, because the app that I'm currently developing is using these tools. So my experience with PWAs is pretty much um, strictly reserved to using it with these tools, um, just because it simplifies making PWAs. But you can also go the harder way if you desire. Um, so number one is Ionic Framework. So Ionic Framework is essentially a cross-platform tool uh, for front end and it's using HTML, CSS and JavaScript or some JavaScript library. So in this case, we'll be using React, which I'll show you in just a moment. So it's a user interface um, toolkit for developing cross-platform apps using a single code base. So it makes using a PWA much easier because you'll automatically generate your manifest.json file and will also um, handle your service worker for you. Of course, you can add to your service worker. If there's some things you know, for instance, that you want to add, but it's put the, the basics, which is usually enough for, for people making PWAs. Um, without uh, concern to PWAs, Ionic Framework can also go a step further. So again, the whole idea is you use a single code base. You code in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can make your PWA, um, but Ionic also has something called Capacitor, which is essentially, let's say, the uh, Google Translate of HTML, CSS, JavaScript to Swift or to Kotlin. So it will take your code and adapt it for it to become a native app if that's something you want to do. If you don't want a PWA, your Ionic framework can also uh, do that work for you and convert it into a native app. Um, so that's unrelated to PWA, but it is a big feature that Ionic has. I'll show you briefly the documentation just so you can have an idea of what it is. So right now I'm on the Ionic framework website. And if I look at some stuff, um, I think a lot of people are here are versed, more versed in backend so this is great for people that are, don't usually touch much of front end. So for instance, it has a lot of UI components essentially. So if you want to have this little card here, you want to do something like this on your app, you can choose whether you're using Angular, JavaScript, React, Stencil, et cetera. And then you can just copy and paste and modify it as you want and uh, play with the properties as well. So you have Ion card, you have Ion checkbox, this, You'll have the ion picker. So you'll have a bunch of stuff that's very useful um, and a fast way to develop apps and highly uh, customizable. After that, with our Ionic framework, we're going to be using React.js. So React.js is a JavaScript library, uh, much like Angular, if you've heard of Angular. Um, I'm going to be using React.js as it's what I'm most comfortable with and what I've been using for the most time. Won't be going over what the code itself does since it has nothing to do with the PWA portion of this app. But the, for those that are interested, I suggest to look into its documentation. It's growing a lot these days. It's used a lot in industry. It's a very um, a skill that a lot of employers are looking for. So just to give you a brief overview, if I asked you to like quickly sketch a website, you would probably have something like what's on the screen right now. You'd have like that main rectangle, which is your website. And inside of that rectangle, you'd have different blocks, right? You're, you have like maybe your header, your nav bars and content, footer, right? Your website is made out of all these blocks. And so what React does is allows you to create what, these blocks, we call them components, and allows you to code them and essentially reuse them everywhere on your website. Um, so if I give an example, um, here, for instance, somebody, the components they decided to create were buttons. So they made these buttons that you can reuse anywhere. So I could go view the code and then copy it and put it into my project if I wanted to. They made a clock, for instance. Um, if we're going more with the idea of like nav bar content, et cetera, this might be more what we're looking at. So just a moment. Card, for instance, like as we saw earlier. So here they with React, they created a card the code is loading on the left. So right here, you have your function card, that's your element. And this is, as you can see, there's an HTML in this. So essentially, 
React allows you to create these components and reuse them all over the place. So it kind of, um, how you would use card is you would just kind of like right here with div, I don't know if you'll let me edit this. Yeah, I could do card like this. And that is how I would incorporate it into uh, when I'd be on my actual page, not here, it won't work, but that's how you would use it. So that's just a brief introduction to React. Okay. All right, so from now we're gonna go to the fun part, which is the demo. So we'll be building a very simple progressive web app using Ionic Framework and React for front end. Um, and we're gonna be hosting it online using Firebase so that we can get that HTTPS so our service worker can uh, function properly. And we'll be using Lighthouse throughout just to see whether our app is installable as a PWA or not, okay? So what I will be doing is I will send a link in the chat, which I will also be showing uh, online. If I could, I'll just stop sharing for the moment. Uh, message, okay, so you guys can go here. So this will bring you to a Google document with the task, I will also be displaying it on the screen. So I'll just set that up while you access it if you desire so, otherwise you can just follow on the screen, but this will be easy for uh, copying and pasting. Okay. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to share my screen again. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. I'm not sure I shared the right one. Okay, no, I think it's okay. Share. Perfect. Okay. So right now you should see my Google Doc on the right. My terminal is hidden right here. And I wrote these down so you can use them in the future or if I'm going too fast or too slow and you wanna kind of go faster or slower than me, no problem, you can use this. Um, I'm concerned that for some there might, depending on the computer you're using, there might be some stuff that you'll, some dependencies that you don't have. So if ever you get stuck and you can't continue for now or it takes too long to, to, to fix, no worries, you have, you'll have access to this uh, whenever, so you can complete it uh, at a later time and you can just follow along um, instead. So um, number one should already be done uh, with the document I sent beforehand. So I won't be doing that, I already have it on my computer. Um, so if you haven't, you can go ahead and install it. It does take several minutes to install. So. If you haven't, then I would say just you just follow with me uh, for this. So we're gonna start right now in your terminal or command line interface, and we're going to create your app. So this is Ionic, start. I'm gonna call it my PWA app. I'm gonna take the blank template. And as I mentioned before, I want to use React. I'm just gonna go ahead and press enter. This might take a little while. We'll let it run its course. So essentially Ionic is going to create what you see right below here and I'll show you in a moment once it's loaded. Just gonna create a blank template. It has other templates such as uh, with tabs on the bottom if you wanna make an app with tabs. I just went for the simplest one um, for now. Slowly getting there. You can also, in the meantime, um, open your Visual Studio Code um, ID as I have here. We'll be using it right after. Uh, 
Um, also make sure you have a, if possible, a Google Chrome browser. Um, since we're going to be using the Google Developer Tools on it. So I suggest you open it if you can. Otherwise, no worries. You can just um, follow along. And you're, you're at which step? Sorry? What step are you on now? I'm on step two. Okay. Step one was like a pre, that was on the things to do pre- uh, Pre okay. presentation okay. because it takes a while sometimes. All right, so I'll ask you if you create a free Ionic account, you can say no. All right, perfect. So I have created the app. So now we're going to go into the app by going CD my PWA app. Now that I'm on it, whenever you want to launch the app on your local host, you can just go Ionic and serve. Hopefully, you should open it here. Mm -hmm. Didn't take a while to open on the first time around. It'll be faster uh, when we do it again later. Okay, perfect. So this is what you get initially, then blank. If I inspect, right click inspect. If I go to application, I have no service worker. And I'll have some part of like a manifest file, but you see service worker is, is blank. So if I were to go to Lighthouse and generate a report, I would expect it not to be installable as a PWA because as we just saw, there is no service worker. So we'll show that in a moment. So right here, we get a white bar and it says, here are the reasons why. Number one, your manifest does not contain a suitable icon. I'm gonna go fix that later. We have no matching service worker detected. Again, service worker is a requirement. And they're uh, missing an icon of at least 144 pixels square. So no worries, we're gonna fix that. But for the moment, we have this blank template. Okay. So at this point, you can go on your Visual Studio code and we're gonna do open folder and we're gonna go find the app. So mine is called my PWA app and I'm going to open it. So let me just put these side by side. Okay, I'm gonna open this here. So number one, you see your manifest.json file. As you see, it is short, it has your name, it's gonna be displayed on the app. It also links some icons. After that, um, we have your service worker .ts. What you might notice is also it's not .js, it's .ts. .ts is for TypeScript. It's essentially a stricter version of JavaScript. Um, this is what happens when you use React. So if I look here, even Ionic is using Workbox. So you have like Workbox a bit throughout. So this is the service worker that they created for you. You can go ahead and add something if ever you want to. They usually have the basic one is uh, good enough um, for you. Then we can also go in the index.tsx file. And earlier I mentioned you have to register a service worker for it to function. So right here it's unregistered. Okay, so just for now, we're gonna leave it as is. We're gonna start by just adding some content to the app because it's pretty barren right now. So I'll copy this. I made a code pen. So it's just essentially you can copy the and paste the code from here. Um, I'm just trying to see, I can't see the chat from here. So I'd like to send it to you. Okay, I'll just, uh, okay. Mm 
Okay, I'll just stop sharing for two seconds because I can't see the chat otherwise or it seems. So here's the code pen. On it, you'll find the code. Okay, so if I click on the code pen here and I open it, we're going to copy paste these two things first. And we're gonna put it in, you're gonna go in pages, which is right here home.tsx, we're gonna replace the first line with this one here. So earlier when I showed on Ionic, uh, oops. Earlier when I showed on Ionic, the different components, the UI components you have, right here what I'm doing is just importing them so I can use them. So it's not everything's imported at once, you just import the ones that you want and then you use them as tags like this here. Then we're going to replace this, which is essentially um, the content that we see here. We're going to replace it with just a bit of content, just up to here, so ion page. And I'm going to replace this whole ion page with that. So if I save that, now we made a very simple checklist. I'm going to create PWA app. Number two, learn React.js. So it's just as simple, just so you can see uh, the power of Ionic. And it's just like something like 20 lines of code. We can get this. All right, now we're gonna return. So now that we've put some content, let's say this is our, our website, not as a PWA app. Now we want to make it as a PWA app. So what we're gonna do is we're right here, I'm at, step eight, sorry, I'll try to mention it so you can follow where I'm at. We're gonna go in index.tsx, where we were just a moment ago, and we're gonna register your service worker. You just take off the un from unregister and it becomes registered. So we're gonna save that. Now we want for the service worker to be able to host it on Firebase. So I'll ask you to go to your Firebase account. I click on go to console. Okay, so I'm gonna say add project. I'm gonna call it uh, my PWA app. And I'll continue, continue and default account for Firebase. And we're gonna create the project. So we're essentially just going to use the hosting um, service of Firebase, just so we can have it secure and our service worker uh, can function properly. All right, perfect. So that's created. Let's say continue. So we have my PWA. What we're going to be using is essentially hosting. We won't add it from here, but you have. Hosting is one of the functionalities that Firebase can give you. I'm going to come back to here. So that was step nine. Now we want to make sure that we can get all the NP, the PWA functionalities that we want. So I'm going to open the terminal within uh, Visual Studio Code. So it pops up here on the bottom. I'll just lift it a bit so you can see it better. And I'm going to install the Ionic PWA elements this all right so now that it's been installed what we're going to do is so notice right now we have a close up thing we have a public file and a source file what we're going to do is like ionic build and we'll see on the left side that a file called build is going to appear and so what it does is it compiles the web assets um, and prepares them for Deployment. So in, within that, you'll have the manifest.json file here disappeared. So we have a manifest.json file. You'll also get a service worker file, this time in JavaScript instead of TypeScript. So that's just for the web so that it deploys properly. And after that, we're gonna add Firebase to the project so that we can host it properly.
Mm -hmm. All right, because I can't see the bottom. All right, so that downloaded. And I'm going to go on step 12 here and just go npm install Firebase tools. Theoretically, I've already installed this um, just to go along. After that, we're going to log in into our Firebase account. Um, it's important if you're already logged into your Firebase account to log out first, otherwise it won't work. So I'm going to go Firebase login. And I probably am already logged in. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so it's already logged in as on the same. So I'm going to do Firebase logout. And then I'm going to log back in. Otherwise, you'll see you won't, won't be able to initialize it. Okay, so now that I'm logged out, I'm going to go Firebase login again. I'm just going to say no. So we're just going to run the same. I'm going to allow it. All right, so perfect. I'm logged in. Now that I'm uh, logged in, I'm going to initialize it. So I'm going to do Firebase in it like this. And so we're just going to initialize Firebase in the project. And we're going to figure out which um, CLI feature we want to add. So for us, in this case, it's hosting. So you can use your arrow keys and your space bar to select. So uh, right now, I'm going to go down to hosting right here. I'm going to space bar. So the little circle is going to fill up, fill up green, and do Enter. So I can add uh, Firebase hosting. I'm going to say use an existing project. So we just created a project right here, remember, on Firebase. So we're going to use that project. So I'm going to say enter because I want to use whoops, enter here. And I'm going to choose my PWA app. So for me, it's the third one here. All right. So there's a bunch of questions they'll ask when it says, um, what do you want to use as your public directory? You're going to say build. Uh, we'll, we'll, in this case, we'll configure it as a single page app. We only have a single page anyway, so it's not really important. Um, personally, I don't need GitHub right now. And for build index.html, do you want to override it? We're going to say no. So now that that initialization is complete, we're going to go here. So we have two new files. We have Firebase RC. And we have firebase.json. Essentially, we're just going to go back to our code pen. We're going to go step two. What we're going to do is we're going to add headers right here. So you have one, two, three right here. Make sure to take the, there's like a little comma here. Make sure you don't miss that, otherwise, it won't work. And we're going to save it. So essentially, um, it's just to configure the hosting behavior that we're adding these headers. So it just passes along um, additional information about a request or a response. Okay, so we're going for, for cache control. Perfect, okay, so we're at step 14 right now. Now we're going to Bionic build dash dash so we're just uh, compiling all those web assets for production. Let's just take a moment. Should be too long. Okay, so now that we've built it, 
we're almost ready to have it as a peer evaluate. What we will do beforehand is your, earlier we had issues with the icons when we did the uh, Lighthouse uh, report or audit. And what it is actually is that you have to put the purpose of your icons. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a comma here. So I'm just going to add a purpose to the first one. We're gonna say it can be used for any icon. And this one as well. And I'm gonna save that. So it can be used from iOS icon, Android icon, desktop icon. Essentially your PWA wants to make sure that you can launch it as any type of, of app that the icons will work. So I'm telling them, yes, you can use this icon. Okay, so that's that. Now, if you, this wasn't clear, I've also put it in the code pen right here, maskable any, any, you can copy paste. Otherwise, it's right here. Perfect. So now that we are essentially, we should have done everything for it to, sorry, I can't see my screen. Uh, we should have been able to do everything for it to become a PWA. So we have the manifest.json file that Ionic generated for us. They put the icons of Ionic. Of course, you'd want to replace it with the icons of whatever app you're making and change the theme color and name accordingly. The service worker, they also created for us using Workbox to which we can also add if we wanted to. And we are hosting using Firebase to have an HTTPS to have a secure uh, hosting. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to deploy the app. Oops, not writing at the right place. Deploy down here. I'm in my terminal. All right, Firebase deploy. And it'll give me a URL where I can go see my app. So it's right here, the hosting URL. I can come and click, open. Here you go. Okay, so this is our app currently. Let's see what happens if we go and inspect. Move that aside a bit. Go on application. Notice this is great. Our service worker is up and running. It's green. And we have our manifest.json file. You can see the logo. Okay, what if we do a report now to see if we can install it as a PWA? So notice it hasn't, visually it doesn't look different. It's really when it comes to um, installing it and, and really the business side aspect where it takes you much, much less time to develop it. So notice here now that we're good as a progressive web app, I have a little plus green sign saying that it's installable as a progressive web app. Our accessibility is great, performance is pretty great too. To say we're using best practices. So this is also another advantage of do, using Ionic. You don't have to do all that research um, or figure out how to, to make it accessible. They'll do a lot of the work for you. If I go to Progressive Web App, you see that I'm meeting all of the installability requirements. Um, they make a couple of suggestions here to make it more optimizable. So I think they don't have an icon that's um, great for an iOS appearance. So they're, say, they're asking us to add an icon that would work well for like an iOS um, lo logo, like the, the, the your app itself and how you see it, um, but it's not necessary to put it if you don't want to. So essentially this is telling us that we're all good to have it installed as a PWA. And so that essentially is how you make a PWA. Now, if ever you want to, uh, as I mentioned, have it as an app that you could have on your phone, you can, uh, you'd have to follow, depending on where you want to deploy it. So if it's Google Play Store, if it's Microsoft Store, you'd have to go through the steps with them and see uh, what you need for it to be downloadable. And that concludes um, how to, what a PWA is, how you can make one um, easily, especially if you're not versed in front-end programming as much, but more in back-end. This is a very simple way to, to do it. And so also to show you plenty of different references or resources that you can use to when you want to make your own PWA. So Christopher, I'll pass it back to you.
Things change, but the memories don't, don't. You only need the light when it's burning low. Only miss the sun when it starts to snow.